Okay, so in today's video we're going to have a look at changing the subject of a formula and we're going to have a look at some of these harder questions that appear on the higher paper. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes and let's get started on this one. Now it says make x a subject. Now if you have a look, there's an x on both sides. So the equal sign here, we've got an x here and an x here. Now when this happens, there's only one process that we can do to turn two of these letters into one and that's going to be factorising at some point. Now in order to do that, we need to get the x pieces next to each other. Now these can be a little bit annoying because there's two different ways of doing it and that means that obviously we can get the x pieces on the left hand side or we can get the x pieces on the right hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to avoid having any negatives in front of pieces and, and, and I'm just going to do it in one particular way but there are two ways of doing these so all I'm going to do is for this particular question I'm going to move the x pieces to the right hand side and we'll have a look at some different ways now in order to do that I need to get rid of this minus 3z on the right so first things first I'm going to add 3z to both sides so add 3z now once I've done that we've got 3x plus y plus 3z and that now equals z x okay so that's the first step done now in order to get all the x's next to each other i need to get that 3x onto the other side so i'm going to have to minus 3x from both sides because that's a positive 3x and then i'll have all my x's on the right hand side okay so once we've done that we're left with on the left y plus 3z and that now equals zx minus 3x now all the x's are next to each other, we can do this final step now. I can actually just factorise this hand, this right hand side here. So if I factorise that by x, taking an x out of the brackets, on the right, let's write what we've got on the left first. We've got y plus 3z on the left. And on the right we will get x brackets z minus 3. And there we go, now I've just got one x in my uh, formula here. So the final step now to finish this off is to divide both sides by this bracket. Okay, and once I divide both sides by that bracket, x will be isolated on its own. And all we've got to do is stick that underneath what's on the left there. So we have y plus 3z on the top, divided by that bracket, which is z minus 3. And that all equals x. And again, we could rewrite that if we wanted, but that is how we rearrange some of these harder formulas here. And we are going to have to go through that process of factorising for all of them. Okay, so let's have a look at another one. Now this isn't that much harder, this question, it's just that there's a bracket involved. Now don't forget, whenever you see a bracket, we're just going to get rid of it and rewrite it without the bracket. So let's just completely rewrite this, but get rid of the bracket. We've got 4x minus y equals, and once we expand that, we get zx plus 5z. Okay, so now we just need to get the x's on the same side. This time I'm going to move the x's to the left. I'm just having a look at this minus y here and just thinking, well, if I add that over, it's going to get rid of that negative symbol there. But again, there are two ways of doing it. But I'm just going to move the x to the left-hand side this time. So if we move that piece, we have 4x minus y minus this zy, zx, sorry, which we're getting over to the left. So minus zx, and that now equals 5z. Now add that y over and that will just leave the x's on their own on that left hand side, so add y to both sides and we get 4x minus that Z, zx equals 5z add y. Now we can do the same thing again, we can factorise this left hand side, so what's on the left here I'm going to factorise that, let's do it up here to the side. So factorising it by x gives us x brackets 4 minus z and that equals 5z plus y. There you go, 5z plus y. So finishing this question off now, same process again, I'm just going to divide by this bracket, so this 4 minus z, and divide by 4 minus z, and it will just go underneath as a fraction, so we'll have x equals 5z plus y over 4 minus z. You could leave it in a bracket in the bottom, but we can get rid of that now because we don't actually need the bracket there anymore. But that's our final answer. Okay, so similar, very similar process. You're going to see a lot of similarity between these. I'm going to do one more before you have a go. We'll have a look at it now. Okay, so the only thing different here is we've got brackets on both sides. So let's just completely rewrite this without the brackets. So let's expand it. So we get 5x plus 10y equals and let's put the p at the end here, so 2xp minus 3p. 
Right, there we go. So where are x pieces? We have the 5x and the 2xp. Now I've just noticed that minus 3p, so I'm going to add 3p to both sides, and this time I'm going to put my x's on the right-hand side. Again, we could we could move it the other way, but I'm just going to be able to avoid having these negative symbols everywhere. So plus 3p, plus 3p, and that gives us 5x plus 10y plus 3p equals 2xp. Now let's get the x's next to each other, so we need to minus this positive 5x to the other side. So minus 5x, and we have 10y plus 3p equals 2xp minus 5x. And again, we can finish this off now, we just need to factorise this right hand side. So factorise this by x, and let's see what we get. So let's write what's on the left, 10y uh, plus 3p. So we have 10y plus 3p equals x brackets, so 2xp, so we'll just be left with 2p, and minus 5. And then again, exactly the same as last time, we're just going to divide by that bracket, so we get 10y plus 3p over 2p minus 5, and that equals x. There we go. Right, okay, so here's something for you to have a go at. Only two questions there, so pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, answers for these then, let's have a look. So make an x a subject, and I'm going to add y to both sides. So if we add y to both sides, we get 4x equals px plus 5z plus y. Move the x piece over, so 4x minus px equals 5z plus y. Factorising the left hand side gives us x brackets 4 minus p, which equals 5z plus y, and divide by the bracket, so x equals 5z plus y over 4, oh, not p, 4 minus p, it was in that bracket there, 4 minus p. There you go, there's your final answer for that one. And on the right hand side here, let's expand both these brackets, so we get 3x plus 12y equals 5xp minus 2p. I'm going to do a little shortcut here. I'm going to um, add the 2p to the left and subtract the 3x at the same time. You don't have to do this step there. I'm just going to do a little bit of a shortcut. So I've got 12y plus 2p when I've, once I've added that over. And I've got 5xp minus the 3x once we've actually minus that over as well. So I've done that in one little jump there. Now we can factorise the right hand side. So we have 12y plus 2p equals x brackets 5p minus 3. And then again, just dividing by the bracket. So 12y plus 12p, sorry, 2p, all over 5p minus 3 equals x. OK. Okay, so quite a tricky question here, a little bit different to those. Now, we've got x's um, on the top and the bottom of that fraction. Now, in order to get rid of this denominator so that we can start unlocking it, I'm going to just imagine that it's in a bracket, so I'm going to put it back into a bracket like we did before, and I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 5, almost like the reverse of the last step we did on all these questions. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 5, so we get z brackets x plus 5, timesing it over, equals x plus 3. From there, it's okay, it doesn't look so bad anymore. We just need to expand this bracket. So we get zx plus 5z equals x plus 3. And now we can just go about that process of getting the x's on the same side. So it doesn't really matter which way we move it in this case. Let's uh, minus the x over. So minus x. So zx minus x plus 5z equals 3, positive 3. Now we'll minus this 5z, so minus 5z, let's see what that gives us, that gives us zx minus x equals 3 minus 5z. Now we can factorise this left hand side again, so same as all the others, and we get x brackets z minus 1, because it's just 1x there, equals 3 minus 5z. And then again, finishing it off by dividing by that bracket to finish this question, we get x equals 3 minus 5z all over 
z minus one. And there is the end of that question. Right, brilliant. Okay, so another similar question, but we've got a square root over it this time. So the first thing we're gonna have to do to unlock that fraction is to square both sides. So if we square both sides to start with, we get y squared equals, and then what's written underneath there, so x plus two over x minus p. Now, same as the last question now, we need to unlock this fraction, so we need to get rid of that by times in both sides by x minus p. And if we do that, that opens up a single bracket on the left. So we have y squared, brackets, x minus p equals x plus two. And again, we're gonna to need to get rid of that bracket now, so let's get rid of that bracket. So let's have a go. x y squared, or x or y squared x, but x y squared, minus p y squared equals x plus two. Now we can start getting the x's on the same side. So I'm going to add the py squared over to get rid of that minus. So x y squared equals x plus two plus py squared. Now we can minus the x over. So x y squared minus x equals two plus py squared. And then we can actually finish this off now by factorizing this left hand side. So we get x brackets y squared minus one, because it's one x equals two plus py squared. And then we can finish this off just like all the others, dividing by that bracket. So x equals two plus py squared over y squared minus one. And there's our final answer there. Okie dokie. So here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so pause the video there, have a go at these two, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so answer for the first one. First things first, we're gonna multiply the uh, denominator over. So I'm not gonna open a bracket, I'm just gonna do that straight away. We get zx plus three z equals x minus two. Then let's get the x's on the same side. So I'm gonna add the two over and minus the zx. So we get three z add two equals x minus zx. Now I'm gonna factorize the right hand side. So three z plus two equals x brackets one minus z. And then finishing it off dividing by the bracket, three z plus two over one minus z equals x, and there's my final answer for that one. Again, if you've moved pieces to the other side, yours is gonna look ever so slightly different to this one, um, but there is one of the answers that we can do, um, just making sure that you are aware that there is another way of doing it as well. So at this stage here, let's have a look, where is it? At this stage here, I actually could have rearranged it slightly differently. I could have, instead of adding the two, I could have um, I'm taken away the x, okay, but it would have left me with that negative two at the start there, and I'm always trying to avoid that. So let's have a look at the next one. We've got to square both sides to start with. So y squared equals x plus three over x minus k. Again, multiply that denominator over, so we get y squared, I'm gonna just times it actually straight by the denominator, so x y squared minus k y squared equals x plus three. And then again, I can just go straight into getting the x's on both sides. I'm gonna do it in one step again. I'm gonna add the ky squared over, so I'm gonna subtract the x. So we get xy squared minus x equals three plus ky squared. And now again, I can factorize. So x brackets y squared minus one equals three plus ky squared. And now I can finish it off by dividing by the bracket. So x equals three plus ky squared divided by y squared minus one. And there we go, there's our final answer. Again, if you had uh, changed the way you rearranged it ever so slightly in this step here, you could have obviously done, you could have minused the three over and added or, or minus the xy squared over. So you've got a slightly different answer with lots of negatives in, but there are two ways of doing it. But that way it keeps it nice and tidy with as, as few negative symbols as possible. So brilliant, that's the end of the video. Well done for sticking through that. Um, and if you're unsure on any of those, obviously go back, rewrite it, have another go, but that is the end there. Um, so well done. Uh, if you liked the video, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.